I used to work at a company called Engine Yard, which was one of the original uh, platforms and service companies. They do it differently than how Cloud Foundry and Heroku do it. Uh, but we ran 8,000 VMs for about 1,000 customers. And when I started hearing that, that uh, VMware's Bosch product, or their outer shell product, which is what uh, Bosch stands for, Bosch stands for Bosch outer shell, which when you think about it means they could have called it anything of any one of 26 different words, posh, mosh, anything. But they chose Bosch, and it Googles terribly. So when you're naming things, quick, quick double check, does it, is there anything else that shows up on Google like, I don't know, hardware products that you use in for home appliances? Um, <laughs> can you get a domain for it and can you get a Twitter account? And if you can, you're good to go. Uh, I don't think that's, they satisfied that for any of these. Anyway, it's called Bosch and here we are. Um, I really felt like we could have used this at Engine Yard. No one else agreed with me, so I left. And, uh, <laughs> and here we all are, yay! Um, and so I now do consulting uh, and training for, for, for Cloud Foundry specifically. Obviously, uh, at the moment, Cloud Foundry you need Bosch and, and perfectly fine with that. So well, let's have a look, just in case you're wondering who I am, except for loud and Australian. Um, I decided to, to show off. I think, so we have six customers, and uh, because, I, I don't know, I have a lot of spare time or my iPhone is stuck to my hand, uh, I talk a lot on all our mailing lists. Um, but, um, but I do commit a lot. I, this, is, this is the pretty picture. I love this picture because it, um, it explains where all my time went. Um, I, do, <laughs> I do try to do everything. I mean, I, I a little bit feel bad because I don't, I don't pair because it wouldn't show up on my graph. Uh, so, you know, pairing, bad for graphs. All right. Um, so, so, so I commit a lot, um, but, you know, I don't know if that's good or bad because perhaps every second commit is, whoops, um, and perhaps I've gone nowhere. My core belief in life is, is uh, everyone deserves nice things. And you might agree with that. And, and for a lot of us, we've sort of looked at Cloud Foundry. You see the demo of Cloud Foundry, you, you know, the, the CF push, and you go, that's awesome. My users are going to love that. But what about us, who have to run Cloud Foundry? You know, sure, not a lot of software is written for the delight and pleasure of the people that are going to run it. And one of the reasons I fell in love with Cloud Foundry was it always seemed like the Cloud Foundry team throughout the years have wanted other people to be able to run Cloud Foundry. And you might think that's a little silly thing to say. But there's many, many bits of open source where the solution to the question, how do I run this, is we're hiring. And, uh, and, and, and the VMware and Pivotal guys have, have never really said that, publicly anyway. Um, so <laughs> so, so they, they released Bosch. I mean, in the first year, they, they, they sort of shared some chef recipes, and, and that was great. And then they released Bosch. And Bosch has allowed all of us um, to, to figure out how to run Cloud Foundry for ourselves. Now, you might wonder, why Bosch? Well, let's put Bosch, in, in, from my perspective, into the eras of, of computing. So, so from a, let's think of it from a packaging perspective. First, you know, sort of uh, Red Hat packaging and, and Debian packaging was all about package a thing and run it. Chef was package and run a complete server. And I believe Bosch has the, is the mental model of packaging, packaging and, and, and running an entire system. And, and you're thinking, Nick, that's great. I don't like bullet points. I need pictures. There's a box. There's a shipping container with the box inside it. Uh, you're probably thinking, this guy's pretty handy with Keynote. Um, there's a lot of boxes sitting on top of each other. So this is what your company might look like. You chefified some stuff, and you found some appropriate action figures to put next to you and guard your servers. Um, I'm not really sure. What have we got there? I think we've got Arnie. No, we've got Mad Max and uh, Indiana Jones, which I don't believe ever featured together uh, on the big film, big screen. Anyway, so, you know, and you've got, you've got nine servers, and you're thinking, this is pretty good. I can do this. This is going well. And eventually, your company looks a little bit like this. Um, uh, Adam Jacobs, one of the chef guys, once talked about there's a, there's, a, there's a dangerous spot in a system where you go from 50 VMs through to 5,000 VMs. At about the 500 mark, that's where it's dangerous because at that point, you still think you've got like, an understanding of what the hell's going on. Uh, <laughs> and this is what happens about that mark. It all falls over. <laughs> um, and that's awkward, I've got to be honest. Uh, <laughs> so the, the mental model I have of what is Bosch is it's the thing that orchestrates all the servers. It does configuration management as well, but it takes a much broader, grander uh, scope of what it's doing. In a way, very anti-Unix you know, 
Unix, lots of little things to do something. Bosch says, bugger that. I'm doing everything, and it's going to be sweet. Um, so that's very great. You know, you've seen, I know how to find pictures on Im Google Images. You've seen that I've got a wonderful theme. But I now want to show you what I fell in love with on April 11 last year. Um, and uh, to do that requires me to switch to the wonders of live demo. Yeah. That's a lie. That was a, the video. <laughs> but let's just pretend it's live because, ooh, look, I'm typing. Anyway. Um, <laughs> So let's look. I've got a running Cloud Foundry system. If anyone ever tried to run Cloud Foundry in Bosch, you may never have got to this point. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but I have one. And uh, look, I've got an app and everything, so that's data. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night. All right. Go demo. What did I do next? I can't talk about it. I, oh, here we go. I did something. All right. So the next thing you can do is uh, they're just virtual machines. What Bosch is orchestrating. Uh, for the most part, is, is VMs and putting things in them. So here's the different VMs, and I'm just, for the sake of you know, showing off, SSHing into one, um, because at the moment, that's what, what one of the places you're going to find your, uh, your system logs. There is a system log aggregator, um, but it doesn't, you know, it's not as fun to demo. So here we have, we have uh, we're just tailing the logs on one of the VMs, it's the router, and so I'm just going to run a little command and attempt to show you that, I don't know, the internet works. Look, there it is inside the router. So, um, well, hang on. Look, there it is inside the router. Um, I should synchronize <laughs> my own voice with, with, with the presentation. Um, all right, so we've seen that there are VMs. Uh, what else can we do once you've got a, a Cloud Foundry running? And uh, by the way, we are getting to the part that I fell in love with. Uh, I just wanted to say some things you may not have seen before <laughs> if you've never actually got it working before. Um, there is a DNS mode. You can use it to, with static IPs if you've got uh, Amazon VPS or, or vSphere or, or uh, you know, OpenStack Neutron. But if you don't, there is a whole mode where you can run it and get uh, DNS entries, internal DNS to each of the VMs. Uh, a lot of people don't know that. That's really interesting. One thing a lot of people don't know is uh, you can get some, some, some basic uh, vitals of each of the VMs, which is uh, handy as a, for a quick glance of answering some of those basic questions of um, why, am I, you know, why am I running out of disk, or am I running out of disk, am I running out of RAM? So here we've got the Postgres job. You might not want to run the Postgres job. You might want to run Postgres uh, however you normally run Postgres and just wire it in, but here we are running Postgres. Uh, the Pivotal guys themselves use RDS uh, for the back end of Cloud Foundry, so um, up for grabs how you want to do that. And this is a deployment manifest. This is the deployment manifest that works. Uh, and if you want one of those, you just come to me, <laughs> and I'll show you the, uh, the OpenStack documentation. It's a little bit, so what we're doing now, by the way, is I thought it'd be interesting to say, look, hey, what if we ran out of, of RAM for our DEAs? Let's add some more. So we've, uh, we added, uh, we went from three to six in the DEAs. That meant we needed an extra three in the resource pool, which a resource pool is describing what a, a server actually is. And I have a very simple premise of a small map still small, not very complex. And now we're on Bosch. And look, oh my lord, it's booting servers. Um, no Amazon console, which by the way wouldn't work because we're deploying to OpenStack. Um, <laughs> no Piston Cloud, we're running this on Piston Cloud for the demo. And look, no, I shouldn't have said that. Oh, that was poorly timed. Um, that was not my point, was not to say Piston Cloud and then watch it fail. Um, but I thought, you know, when you're doing a screencast, you, have, you can go one of two ways, choose your own adventure. You could fix the problem and then appear that it never happened, or you could show debugging. So here we are debugging. Uh, we, looked at, we looked inside the log of the job, so every job you run in Bosch, because uh, Bosch is server-based, you can go and get all the jobs you've ever run or tasks and see what went on. So we looked and it said, out of quota, and I thought, bloody default quotas? God damn it. Um, and then I thought, you know what? This is going to be awesome. I'm going to delete everything. Uh, because there is a Bosch CCK command which will detect that one or two or all of my servers have gone mysteriously missing, and let me fix the problem. <laughs> I just think this is brilliant. So what it said is there are 10 missing servers, which is all of them. And, uh, and I'm going through going, yes, please recreate that one, please recreate that one, recreate that one, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and it will. <laughs> this is truly awesome. So when Matt, when, uh, Matt Coker yesterday talked talk about moving from one a uh, AZ to another, this is another sort of uh, service that Bosch does for you, when you can get it working. Um, uh, so eventually it comes up. Now, I don't know if you notice, you can't really tell because I'm skipping through it pretty quickly, but they were coming up one at a time. And when you're really stressed because you're trying to put a presentation on, 
you don't want them coming up one at a time. You'd like a little more current currency. So what you do is you create a ticket. <laughs> so this is the Bosch project, and this is me typing out a ticket. <laughs> Just when you might be most stressed, your entire production system has been deleted by someone with dashboard access. <laughs> Or, I couldn't figure out how to get screen flow to speed it up, nor how to type faster. Uh, or, you're preparing a screencast for Platform CF. <laughs> Bosch CK brings back VMs one at a time. That's how you paste in text. <laughs> I think. So no, that's just for commits for when I go and, and <laughs> fix something. I think it wants to torture me. It loves me, but the love hurts. Um, <laughs> so I think I'm, I'm really telling the story of, of Bosch as a, as a person. Um, and it's, uh, anyway, so eventually it finishes. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and at this point, um, you look, some of them haven't quite come up. Uh, all the VMs have come up. Some of them have come up in a failing state. That's not a problem because we're now going to get back to what we were trying to do before, which is bring up those three extra VMs, and everything will sort of converge to success. Uh, and uh, ask me again, I say, yes, I still want them. Uh, a little bit inaccurate because one of them did come up and two failed. Um, and uh, so that's going to keep going. And eventually, the jobs will restart, the ones that need to be restarted, the ones that were failing. So we've got NFS, NATS. NATS is really important. A lot of other jobs don't like to work if NATS isn't running. Um, and, uh, and eventually, those DEAs will come up. This is brilliant. Not the failing part, but failures happen anyway. All it means is that you start bringing up bigger systems, and you see more failures. But that's not your fault. That's, that's the silly OpenStack quotas. <laughs> that aren't my fault. Um, so there it is, our system running. And, uh, and, and it's brought back the data. So even though we lost every server, it even reattached the volumes back on the appropriate jobs. Um, and so if you've ever had to, you know, the one reason I fell in love with Bosch, or the reason I've, I, the story I tell about the rest of the world and their lack of understanding, is everyone that's ever used Chef, we all agree, Chef and Puppet Configuration Management, woo! Um, but every single one of those people, and the more popular it gets, the more of the every single one of the people set grows, have either, either have to manually do this stuff with a knife command or whatever Puppet has or, or the Amazon console, or they go on write massive amounts of orchestration. Some companies, that's their core business value. Engine Yard, Heroku, AppFog, anyone that's doing this stuff, they're, they're, they're spending substantial amounts of R&D doing this stuff. Why Bosch? Why not Bosch? Why do we not deserve something like Bosch? It's brilliant. All right, so I want to show you one last thing, which is, um, so, so the next part, and the last thing I want to show you, so very short, is, is so great, you've deployed something. And I see this all the time with, with uh, open source software. They might say, here is, here is a, a VM, you know, the Amazon Marketplace. Boot a VM, and you've got the system running. And, and I'm expecting to find small print, any print that says, so what happens when a new version comes out? And they never put that print in. They don't, it's, I, I can't believe it. To, to deploy something once is not that interesting. I mean, okay, so it's hard sometimes, but it shouldn't be. Um, but the next 59 months of a system is really you know, where the rubber hits the road. Can you keep, as if you're going to deploy Cloud Foundry, you've got a, new releases come out every week. So let's just have a look what happens. Let's look at how simple it is to upgrade when a new release comes out. So we, we're running 138. Let's just say 139 came out. All right, so there you can see I've got uh, Cloud Foundry 138 running. Uh, it's got a little asterisk saying it's deployed somewhere. Currently, the way you get a uh, Bosch release is you go to the, the repo, you download it, um, and it's, it's stored somewhere in the repo. So what we're going to do is upload the release. There are two steps, and we just did one of them. Um, so what it's doing now is it's going to do, figure out all the packages and jobs that it's never pulled down before, and then it's going to upload them to Bosch. And when I say all the packages, uh, a Bosch release is basically its dedicated distro. Even though this is running on Ubuntu, the, these, uh, the VMs ultimately are Ubuntu, we don't use 
uh, the, the Bosch releases, Cloud Foundry doesn't use any of the, uh, the Ubuntu, Debian, whatever packaging system. We describe everything from source, and uh, so it's completely, uh, you know, from a, you can see exactly what's going into it. Um, so if you're a security-minded person and you think that's a bad thing, great. There is the security.cf.org ma uh, mailing list. I don't know if it's a mailing list. I suspect to just go to Matt Ryder's uh, personal email. But nonetheless, <laughs> Matt, you can tell me if that's not correct. But go and talk to Matt. If you want to you know, join the security aspect of, of Cloud Foundry, then... <laughs> to two people who aren't going to fix the problem. Um, but, but nonetheless, I don't mean it from that perspective. I mean, you know, you delegate. Um, so anyway, <laughs> beautiful people. I love them both. Um, I used to work with Matt at Engine Yard. Um, so now we're going to upgrade to 139. We just go change the manifest. We do a deploy. It says, is that what you really want to do? And you say, you betcha. How bad could it go? I do recommend, I mean, one of the great things about Bosch, it can describe something absolutely and completely. You've only got to change a few little things, and you can do a staging environment. Deploy it in parallel. And uh, I highly recommend testing any changes uh, in that, that manner first, especially uh, upgrades. Um, and this is just showing the jobs restarting. And at this point, I ran out of time. And I had to stop screencast. And I had to walk up here. And I thought, let's go and find out how it went. And there it is finished. So thank you very much, everyone. Hope you have a great day. <laughs>